Hi, good morning. Um, I'm Vernon Adams. Um, I mostly um, work designing Libre typefaces, Libre web fonts. Um, so I'm, talking, I'm going to talk about freeness uh, as a technical aspect of type design. So this is a, uh, a quote from Emile uh, Ruder, as the Swiss, a prominent Swiss uh, graphic designer and typographer, who is um, one of the main main sort of components of the uh, Swiss style, the sort of modernist uh, 20th century style. Um, it's a quote from him, kind of classic modernist statement. Um, Typography has one plain duty before it, and that is to convey information in writing. A printed work which cannot be read becomes a product without purpose. Um, and I'm suggesting that if we take that logic into the uh, present day, that actually Libre fonts are the most fit for purpose fonts um, for typesetting the kind of information and content that we're seeing more and more on the web today. So I'm suggesting that freeness has become a technical aspect of font design. And that freedom of movement for a font is, is now just as important as qualities such as legibility, uh, language support, cross-platform compatibility. So the kind of the big key to all this is um, the idea of real active text and how that is presented or how, how, we, how we deal with that on the internet. And the idea of real active text is it's the actual text you have on the web as opposed to um, text presented as a bitmapped image. And real text is becoming the kind of real key of the web. And why is that? Um, for a start, it uses little bandwidth, so it's incredibly fast <coughs> compared to bitmap images and you know, flash presentations, all this sort of thing. Um, real text can be searched, can be indexed, cached, mined, and tagged. Can be easily shared, copied, distributed, redistributed. Uh, it could, real text can be scaled without loss of resolution, whereas a bitmap image, you, you, once you've set it in the bitmap, that's it. You've got it there, whereas real text can be scaled. Uh, real text can be styled dynamically using style sheets. And real text can be themed, again, using style sheets. And uh, perhaps most importantly, people today are producing a lot of textual content. <clears throat> so the solution to this uh, came in the CSS3 standard, which was a, a CSS rule called at font face. And you're probably very familiar with this. And you're probably also uh, familiar with how it worked. So with this rule, you could um, simply upload a real font to the web. You could call to that font from a style sheet. And you could render the text on any reader who was looking at this page could render that text with that single font file, which was an amazing, actually, simple, but it was an alleluia moment uh, for web designers, well, actually for everybody. But there was, of course, a big problem with that in that proprietary licensing was designed Basically, it was a license for single or multiple users, but not multiple users as in like everybody who was reading 
the page. And also font licensing, proprietary licensing, very often did not allow this kind of embedding of a font in a document, which App Font Face did. So quite simply, a proprietary font uploaded to a web server also became easily downloaded by anyone who had no license to use that font. And as we all can imagine, that was a huge problem for um, proprietary foundries. And that's kind of got worse over the last few years because what we're seeing more and more on the web, as opposed to before when you, if you, you went out and bought a book, you were kind of like a passive reader. Uh, more and more, everyone is becoming a publisher. Everyone is a, a writer, a blogger. It's like everyone has a website and everyone has readers. So we all need fonts, whereas before, um, fonts were tools for, for professionals. Now we actually, we all need fonts. And so my response to this situation has been, uh, one example I'm gonna look at is um, a font I designed called Oswald. Uh, so Oswald, I designed pretty much from the ground up to be a free, very easily distributed, easy to use, and popular typeface. Um, and at the time I was looking at, there's a, there's a woman, um, Southern California University, uh, Joanna Blackley, who kind of, he, she works uh, with, with media and culture, and she often blogs, talks about um, how fashion and free culture interconnect. And this is a quote from her. Um, she's suggesting that the way fashion works can be a lesson for the way free culture and culture in general should work more. So the idea is in fashion there's, uh, it's acceptable to copy because there's no copyright, very little copyright in fashion. And actually that's the same with fonts. There's very, you cannot, in many, especially in the US, you cannot copyright uh, letters, fonts. So this is her, these are kind of four virtues for her for copying in fashion design. It's democratizing, it establishes trends faster, it creates an incentive to create new trends, and it accelerates creative innovation. I should point out, when she's using the word copying, she's not talking about counterfeiting. She's talking about that very, uh, what, what is actually a very natural thing we do, where we look at something which is popular, and we sort of say, oh, that's, that's something I can, I can do too. This is what she means by copying. So, with Oswald, I conceive this uh, from the ground up as a, what I would see as a very popular uh, design. So it comes from the classic kind of 20th century uh, Gothic sans serif faces. And I used a number of old uh, faces from the early 20th century and sort of kind of mash them together in a way and redesign them and there, you know, there was actually a lot of design work going on in, in making this design suitable for the web. Um, <clears throat> and one of the targets I saw was for example this whole phenomenon which was starting up which was themes for things like WordPress. Um, and I think Oswald, I, I put it together in like a week, and it was, Google put it up on the servers. Very quickly, we started to 
It got used a lot. I started to get feedback. So over a sort of like 12 month period, first sort of 12 months, its development was very, it was very much this sort of release, release early, release often. So as feedback came, it got improved, got fixes, and it got used a lot for this sort of stuff. Oh, and it also got picked up by the, uh, it kind of, this was interesting for me, it got picked up by the Occupy movement to, as, as part of their sort of free toolkit they gave out to people to make posters, which was, was kind of interesting. And that led me to think, well, I can push this further. So I, this is one I actually created for the uh, Occupy Design Group, which was designed so they could make posters. And then I sort of introduced, uh, we, we started, as its popularity was obvious, we introduced new weights, so we had a, a sort of bold, and then a lighter, and that kind of accelerated its adoption and usage. So as of, the, as of now, I think this is the last seven days. These are the stats for Oswald, just from Google. Because it, you can now, th there's several other uh, ways to use um, Oswald, other servers. But this is the Google stats for the last seven days. So these are individual API pulls. So, that's, so this is, it, Oswald gets pulled like 100 million times a day, so this is like a, yeah, almost. It's like, this is like this, a seven day stat, which is pretty huge. It's like the second uh, most used web font. I think Open, Open Sans is the most used. Oswald is the second most. And so building on that, uh, the next few months I'm gonna be bringing more improvements, more weights, um, Cyrillic support and uh, probably expanded and condensed versions as well. And the, the, the point of that is that what's nice for me is this is how I conceived it. I, I conceived this from the start to be a very free, easy to use and popular face. And that's what it's become. So, thank you very much. Do you have time for questions? Thank you. Thank you, Vernon. And we have like five minutes for questions. The first there. So, I, I wanted to ask the, the, the notion that freeness is a technical part of design. Yeah. Um, when I hear that coming from the free software world, I think of the four freedoms that the FSF defines. And redistribution is clear how, how that, um, how freeness impacts that. And I guess the, uh, see though it's, it's the freedom to use it, which is obvious, the freedom to change it or modify it, study it and share your changes. So I guess the feedback that you get from people would probably fall under the share your changes kinds of things. I am curious though if you've seen people uh, actually modify Oswald and publish their own versions of that. And I'm not sure there's been um, other versions published, okay. but actually that's quite rare for Libre fonts anyway. Yeah. You know, it, it's, unfortunately it's not something that happens a lot. Um, what I have had is um, People submitting, for example, Greek or sub, some Cyrillic, uh, you know, character sets. Okay. The, um, the other, the other. And, and obvious, you know, just fixes or right. suggestions for improvements, uh, okay. stuff like that. The other thing that I was going to ask is on the, the freedom to study it, which is one of the ones that the FSF defines, is how do you see freeness? Is there other ways that, as a designer you can make? a font easier for other people to study and learn from? Yeah. 
Definitely. Like you, what? You, uh, well, I think as, mu as much of the sort of source material, you know, if, whether that's files, uh, sources, that, you know, for example, specimen pages that you use to study or to scan, etc., as much as possible makes it easier. Um, and I think that's a kind of personal, I mean, that's something I, I try and do, you know, as much as time permits. Right. Um, but other, others don't. Others, you know, simply make source files available. Okay. Thanks. Another question. <clears throat> well, it's more rhetorical, or like I, I would like you to answer this. It's n I, I'm, I'm not really worried about this myself, but <clears throat> the argument, argument we hear a lot, of course, with type, de type design uh, moving into Libre, especially moving into the web, is how then will the type uh, industry and uh, individual type designers make a living? Can you? Tell us a bit of how you uh, survive giving your fonts for free. How I survive or how yes. other you. designers survive? You, you yourself. Well, I think, well, I survive by uh, a, a mixture of um, being paid to make Libre fonts, for, for example, from Google, um, doing custom work, often customizing Libre fonts for people who want an extra weight, and they're often prepared to pay to pay me to make that weight. Um, but actually, that I'm not sure that there's a huge difference in terms of making a living between people who aspire to make Libre fonts and people who aspire to sell their fonts. It's it's equally uh, you know there's there's a lot of people who aspire to sell their fonts who don't sell them, for example. Um, and I often think that they could uh, do, could make more money by making Libre fonts. There's, there's, there's evidence that that's probably true. And, and actually that's probably, you know, you, you see that now, uh, even, even the larger foundries are having to respond to, to this um, by making uh, free fonts because it's simply keeps them in the spotlight, keeps them in the market. So, yeah, I, I guess I would I'd say that you survive by uh, getting your product out there. Yeah. We do have another question. The last one, I, I, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, so, uh, with, with your fonts, do you declare a reserved font name and require people to change the names? Sorry? If, if I make a different version of Oswald, yeah. can I call it Oswald 2? Good question. <laughs> I'd probably ask you that, Dave, if someone... <laughs> did. I think that's... Yeah, we, we, we kind of... Um, We've talked about this, the, the, you know, how, how far are people prepared to go to making stuff? I'm someone who's, uh, I have a very loose relationship to my work. So I'm kind of, if people are using uh, Libre fonts freely and they're, they're using the work in that way, then I'm happy for people to do pretty much any, you know, whatever they want. I think that the, if, if it was uh, commercial, found, you know, proprietary foundries taking this and trying to privatize it, then that would be an issue. But um, yeah, the font name is, uh, <clears throat> you know, that, that comes under the licensing. So I'm not sure how the open font license is with. Uh, with the licensing name. Do you, do you know that, Dave? Is that a trick question? <laughs> Tell us. It's optional. It is. That's what I said, isn't it? But do you take the option? Do I take the option? Yeah. 
I'm, I'm happy for people to take Oswald and, and make an Oswald 2 or uh, whatever from it. So, thanks. We'll have to go on. Um, the next speaker, thank you, Vernon. The next.